Welcome to Kicking It Local, the podcast all about the football community in South Australia. I'm your host, Johnny Kecko, and thanks for joining me for another year of interviews. And those interviews will be kicking off very soon, so make sure you keep an eye on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Kicking It Local SA. Give us a like, give us a follow to make sure you don't miss out on that first interview. First of all, I want to give a big shout out to Front Page Football for writing a beautiful piece on my interview from last season with Jaden Labasso, sharing his story, which I found inspirational about his fight against Gillian Barre. And thank you to Antonis for writing that beautiful piece up. Make sure you head to Front Page Football to read that write-up by Antonis Pagonis and all the other write-ups about the NPL season here in South Australia. They do a good job promoting the local game in South Australia, so make sure you give them a follow as well on social media. But let's get into the preview with the coaches for 2023 as I sit down with all the coaches in the NPL. Part one, I'll be sitting down with three coaches across the NPL, including Morris Natali from Modbury Jets, who is looking to match up with the big guns this year and has made some changes to his squad. Plus, Paul Pezos, treble winning coach last season with Adelaide City, looking to get the 3 P this year, has also made some big changes for his team, including one on the bench as well. Plus, he also touches on the Gatorade incident with Nicholas Bucco after some comments made by Bucco during the week on Front Page Football. But first, I'll be kicking it all off with Croydon FC's head coach, Travis Dodd, who talks about the club settling into their brand new home in Regency Park. Let's get into part one of NPL Preview with the coaches. I'm here with head coach of Croydon FC, Travis Dodd. Thanks for joining me, mate. Pleasure. Pleasure to be here as always. A big season coming in again uh, for Croydon FC, especially for yourself. You're bringing in a brand new assistant coaches in Robbie Saracino and Nick Bazalis as well, both coming from Metro Stars last year. And uh, a very good friend of yours, Robbie Saracino. How have you found those inclusions into your coaching staff coming into this pre-season? Yeah, look, it's, uh, it's been good having uh, the new coaches come on board, um, particularly with Robbie and his first team experience, having been a head coach for a, for a number of years. Uh, I, I think we're very lucky to, to have him um, and Nick because I've worked with both of them before. And you know, between the three of us, we've got a good rapport um, and a good working relationship. So... Um, yeah, their you know their their titles are as assistant coaches, but you know we're all coaches here. You know we're all on equal playing field. Um, so yeah, it's been great to have have them with the the fresh ideas um, for this season. And you know when you factor that in with coming into the new new facility, um, you know it's shaping up to be a good year for us. You're looking good on the, uh, the the coaching side of things, but on the field, we've had a few changes um, into this season. John Hall, who's one of the uh, the best goalkeepers in the league last year, he's now left you guys to go to Melbourne. You've had a few other ins and outs with a few injuries as well. What's some other ins and outs um, in the off-season that you've made and what were some of the reasons behind it? Yeah, we lost uh, also uh, Anthony Trimboli, went to Campbelltown, um, Jared Clark to White City and uh, Joseph Machida to Modbury. Now look, football is is a game where players move on and it's part and parcel of the game. Um, would I have liked to have kept them? Of course, but you know, these things happen and what that does for my playing group and you know, players that I bring in is it provides new opportunities. So uh, looking forward to, to seeing what the players can do that come in. Um, talking of that, you know, I've brought in Connor O'Reilly from Metro Stars, who's a centre-back. Um, Vian Kukawama from Adelaide City as a winger. Uh, and we've just signed a, a striker, Andre Carl, from uh, Canberra. So he was uh, trialling with Adelaide City for a while and we were lucky enough to get him on the, the death of um, the, the transfer window. So um, yeah, add to that, we've also signed um, a Japanese import, um, Maya Hisamoto, who's uh, an attacking player, uh, and we've also got another visa player coming uh, in Thomas Greco, who uh, is also an attacking type player. So, look, yeah, we've we've lost four players, and you know, a keeper was was one of the, the key positions. But you know, in that regard, we're we're going with our reserve keeper uh, Johnny uh, at this stage to to give him the opportunity to play. Um, you know, he did well last year when he came in and played a couple of games. So. You know, for him, it's a big opportunity for him to step up um, and and be a first-team keeper. So, 
whilst I have lost you know, four players, uh, I think I've recruited well. Um, the unfortunate thing has been the injury front. You know, there's uh, Tom Visser actually was another one that I've signed from Cumberland. Um, unfortunately, he hurt his ankle uh, two weeks into preseason and um, has had surgery on his ankle. So you know, it'll be probably you know round eight or nine that we see him back. Um, but yeah, on balance, the players that I've brought in, I'm really excited. Uh, it's the key thing for me is getting the squad fit and keep, keeping them fit for the season. Well, it seems like you've made some really good inclusions into that squad, but also with the, uh, the influence of the new coaches on board with you this season, what can we expect from the club going into 2023? Yeah, look, one, one thing that was key for us last year was that we didn't score enough goals. Um, our defensive record was, I think, the third best in the league, but we lacked um, you know, that goal-scoring um, potence. Yeah, we've recruited heavily in that in that front third, um, and and I'm hoping, particularly with the the signing of Andre Carl, given we've had uh, a couple of other injuries to our attacking players, that he can come in and and produce goals for us. Um, getting into these goal scoring positions has not been an issue for us, even in pre-season. It's just that killer instinct in front of goal. So, look, we're going to be an attacking team. There's no doubt about it. We'll we'll definitely go out and. Uh, and take it two teams. Um, we just need to make sure that we've got that that ability and that composure in front of goals to put these opportunities away. And if we can do that, I, I think we, we'll have a, a really successful season. Is there anyone in particular this season who you think we should keep an eye on in your squad? Well, um, I think Vian's done done really well in pre-season. Uh, yeah, one thing that that we're working really hard with him is you know that that end product because throughout pre-season he's. He's getting into some really, really good opportunities. Um, we just need him to to start hitting the back of the net, which he did in our um, most recent trial game. So it's good to get that monkey off his back um, to to start scoring goals. And you know, now we just need the the rest of the team to you know, settle down a bit and show that composure and uh, start start bagging the goals. We are recording here in the brand new facility of the uh, Croydon FC's home ground in uh, Regency Park. It's a beautiful facility here. You're settling in now and you're going to have a full season at this new facility, not playing away from uh, any traditional homes. But what's it been like for the club and what's the ambitions going into the season is to try and get silverware or just try and make the finals and be competitive this year? Look, we're, we're really excited to be in this home ground. It's been you know, almost three years uh, in the making. So you know, even from the start of pre-season, the, the motivation and the morale within the playing group was, was up already because we've now got a home base. You know, we're not having to trudge around to John Hart Reserve. We're not having to play our home games at, uh, at Bacala's ground. So all of that has you know, small impacts on players' motivation. Uh, it helps as coaches as well that, that this is our home ground. So with that and with the squad that we've put together um, comes expectation. Now, expectation is coming not only from me and the other coaches, but also from a club level, at a board level. And it's that expectation that I... That I, um, you know, I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, we're not here to make up numbers, that's for sure. There's three trophies available for us every year, and we want to go out and win win trophies. Um, you know, I think the last trophy this club won was in 2017 when Mark Brazali was at the club. So, look, it's certainly something that you know, I want to be a part of. Uh, I want to be part of history here at this new club, and you know, I want to be the first coach to, to, to be able to bring silverware to the, to the new stadium. Looking forward to coming here and looking forward to watching from the grandstand because it looks like a beautiful spot to watch football, and I can't wait to, to see how you guys play this, this season. No worries. Thanks, Johnny. Um, looking forward to seeing you around. That was head coach of Croydon FC, Travis Dodd. I'm here at Adelaide City Park with the head coach of Adelaide City, Paul Pezos. Thanks for joining me, Paul. No worries. Thank you. A big year for you now. You, you're going in to try and win the, get the three-peat this year. You won the treble last year. You've made some good recruitments uh, in, the, in the squad, but also you've uh, brought in the former head coach of Adelaide Comets in Barney Smith to, to be your assistant. How have you found pre-season um, going into this uh, the big year for the club? Yeah, very well. I mean, we I brought Barney in. Uh, obviously, I lost... George Sonis is a, a very good coach, and uh, you know he's a he's a, a senior coach, and I'm glad that he he got another gig with Adelaide Comets. Uh, I brought Barney in; uh, he compliment compliments me well. You know, um, he brings some something different as well to the the coaching staff and to the players. 
Um, and in terms of uh, pre-season, it's been really good. Uh, the boys are, are fit, raring to go. Um, you know, we lost uh, a young Majok uh, to Brisbane Raw. Um, again, you know, we, we wish him all the best and that's part of my job here is to try and help players um, fulfil their dreams and if we can help them some way or form, that's what we're here for. But, um, you know, we lost him, but uh, we also uh, brought back Andrew Marveggio, who's come back from Montenegro playing professionally, um, ex LA City player. And we've also signed a, a Japanese import, uh, Katsu, um, which uh, I think uh, people uh, will love to be watching this player play. And also you brought in Gus Williams as well from LA Comets. What other um, internets have you made and are there any reasons behind the style? Are you trying to replicate what you did last year or are you going for something different? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about Gus. Um, we sort of knew but we weren't definite about Ayum Majok, but... Um, Irrespective, uh, we see Gus as a as a quality player, and he he sort of uh, he suits a style of play that I uh, I sort of envisage and and, and bring out to the, to the players. But um, listen, the style stays stays the same. Um, we've been successful. Um, it's about hard work, uh, the willingness to to work for each other, and to 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 want to win. Um, so you won't see anything different from that perspective. So we should expect to see exactly what we saw last season from the club. Yeah, I mean, we always try and play a good, good brand of football. We like to be attacking, be on the front foot uh, and put teams under a lot of pressure. So uh, that's in my DNA. That won't change. Maybe a formation might change from time to time, but uh, everything else stays the same. Last year we saw Ayuma Yuma Jock. Um, he was very good at the club. He's been taken now by Brisbane Raw. Who should we keep an eye on this season in your squad? Well, you know, uh, you got to have a look at uh, Aladdin, obviously, uh, Gus, um, you know, and then you've got the usual suspects like Charlie, Jai, Bressan, um, and like I said, Katsu, uh, you know, he brings something different and, um, you know, he's a quality player. He's going to join us uh, shortly. Uh, but we also brought in two 15-year-olds from our under-18s um, who have got potential to potentially uh, play a few games this year. And the club's ambitions, I'm assuming they haven't changed from every other year. It's silverware, is it? Always, and that's uh, that's my that's my philosophy. You, you play to win. Um, and again, it's a challenge for us, us because, you know, we won everything last year. Um, the players are up for another challenge, and the challenge is to try and do the uh, three-peat, um, and that's what we're playing for this year. And finally, the first game of the season is going to be huge against West Adelaide, a former big rivals of the club. How's it feel to, to kick the season off with that one? Yeah, well, I picked up, I picked West Adelaide because uh, I've played for that that uh, West Adelaide as a junior and, and in the old NSL, and uh, and when I played for them in 2014, when we came back up to the MPL, we played Adelaide City, and there was like two and a half thousand people there. Uh, we're hoping the same, and you know um, they need to be in the MPL. They've got a, a rich history, um, and you know the coach Jimmy is also a good friend of mine, and he worked hard last year to get them up to the MPL. So uh, credit where credit's due, and uh, you know I wish them all the best, but except for next Friday. Absolutely, I did say that was my last one, but I can't go, I'll let you go without asking this question. Get an update on the Gatorade incident. Have you thought about getting Booker back yet? He did mention that uh, you haven't got him back yet, but are you still thinking about it? Well, someone uh, told me about the social media. I don't have social media, and he did say that I got rid of Joey Costa. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, mate, Joey and I are, are very close, and he's a great, great lad. You know, unfortunately, um, he had to move on for work commitments, and, you know, we didn't want to stop him, and especially didn't want him to be out of the game because he's a quality person, a quality player. So he still needs to be involved at a less uh, committed situation. And uh, But, yet yeah, I saw that. Booker will have his time. I might join in a session or two and uh, and let him know I'm I'm back. Nice. We'll keep an eye out on that. Hopefully we can get that on film. Hopefully. <laughs> Good luck, mate, and all the best with the season. Thank you. That was Paul Pezos from Adelaide City. I'm joined with the head coach from Modbury Jets, Morris Natali. Mate, last year was a remarkable year for the club which included a successful Federation Cup and Australia Cup campaign on top of gaining automatic promotion to the NPL for this season. How have you found the pre-season lead up to this upcoming campaign, especially with the, the big expectations to maintain the club's convincing performances from last season? Yeah, uh, th thanks for having me on, Johnny. Um, yeah, look, our, our pre-season's been good. 
been a solid pre-season. Um, we, you know, obviously uh, have had to sort of ramp up our intensity and those sort of um, parts of your training so that we can adjust to the rigours of MPL. But other than that, it's been a, a good, yeah, good transition through uh, last, especially the last few weeks. We've really picked it up, and I think we're on track. And well, you've, since you've made, um, you're getting used to the transition. What's been some of the big ins and outs for the squad um, in this off season, and what are some of the reasons behind the changes? Yes, yeah, so we've we've picked up a keeper who's taking one of our visa spots. Um, name's uh, Ryan Neil. Um, he comes from Wales. Uh, he's been in Australia now for about seven, seven or eight months, um, and he's just good quality, experienced keeper. Um, unfortunately, we, we, we already had some good keepers, but they were very young. And what we were finding is, uh, you know, when, when times got a bit difficult, they, there was nothing for them to fall back on. So probably throwing him, throwing him into the deep end a little bit too early. So that's been a great acquisition. Then we've picked up Tim Henderson to bolster up our um, defensive stocks in that centre-back area. Uh, as we know, Tim's a real quality um, player, but not just a quality player, but good character as well, so it's good good for the squad. Picked up a young Joseph Makeda from um, Croydon, a midfielder, who's uh, really fit, fitting in really, really well. Um, yeah, and... You know, and kept and kept our squad basically. So you know, we, we're in a good place, I think. How are the boys and new boys coming into the squad? How have they fit in? Have they transitioned nicely? Oh yeah, beautifully. Um, yeah, it's just been a real seamless um, transition for them. They've uh, good, as I said, they're all good, good characters, which makes it easy because the boys just uh, you know welcome. We've got a really good, welcoming, good group of uh, young men who, you know, there's no egos in the squad. Everyone helps each other. It's like a big family. So, yeah, and, and that just fit in perfectly. Well, that's good. that's good to hear. And what should we expect to uh, see from your team heading into the season with the new inclusions into your squad as well? Yeah, look, I mean, we're not going to change the way we play. We'll continue to keep playing the way we play, which is a you know, pretty attacking brand of football. Um, we like to keep the ball. Um, so nothing on that front will change. But I suppose what will change is, uh, you know, you probably just need to have a better awareness techni- tactically of your opponents. You know, there's some good quality t- players and good quality teams and good quality coaches. And... Um, You've just got to adapt to that a little bit. Now, we've got Tim Anderson and Makita and also Ryan Neal all joining the squad, but who is uh, someone we should um, keep an eye on this season? If it's one of the new boys or one of the boys from last year that might step up, is there anyone we should keep an eye out for? Gee, that's that's like asking me <laughs> who your favourite son is. Um, <laughs> look, I, oh, our game is really built around a team squad effort, and I'm not just saying that cliche, but um, I don't think there's any individual. I mean, at times there's various individuals who can step up and, you know, uh, need to do what they what's required of them. And, you know, I, I, it's just a difficult one to answer. I'm obviously, you know, you, you, we, we have got top goal scorer from last year and medal winner, Hamish, so obviously... His name would be up around there. But you've got, you know, Jesse Francesca, captain, Tim Henderson who's come in. Uh, you know, where, you know where, where does it start and where does it stop? <laughs> now, this season, um, first year back into the NPL, the top flight. Uh, what's the club's ambitions for this year? Obviously, trophy is going to be hard to try and top the league in your first year in there. But is it making finals or just building the squad for the future or what's the ambitions for the club this year this season? Yeah, look, we haven't really I'm not one to really set goals and say this is what we're going to do this year or this is what we aim to do. I, I think for us it's a bit more of what we did last year but a little bit better. Um which means, you know, we go out to try to be competitive and win every single game. So that's been our Ever since I got to the club, that's the one thing we've said from day one. Let's try to win this game. 
I think it's something, you know, we, we don't want to be fighting relegation. That's a given. Um, we want to think we might be able to play in the finals. But we don't know. Until we get it stuck into the season, you know, you don't really know what exactly, you you know, you get where you're going to find yourself. So we, we just want to be competitive right from the outset, day one and try to win every every game we play. Absolutely. We know that mindset that uh, that got you to the Federation Cup final and also the uh, Australia Cup run you had as well. Uh, yeah, do you reckon that's, that's right. prepared the boys as well for this level this year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it was, it was an eye-opener. Um, it just showed that we've still got parts of our game. We were a little bit naive. And, you know, that, that gave us a good insight as to what, what to expect this year. Um, and our Adelaide City final was a really good example. I thought, I thought general play-wise, we probably were as good in patches, if not better. But when when the moment came, they were just clinical and ruthless, and we weren't. So th- there's there's things like that that we've learned from that. Um, but also we, we've got a we still got a core of the squad is still very young and. You know they're building they're building up that game experience now and hopefully they can progress and move on this year absolutely man well all the best for the season 2023 and your first year back in the npl and hopefully uh we can see the modbury jets flying as much as you did last year thanks johnny really appreciate your work thank you so much morris and tali from modbury jets That's all for part one on the NPL preview with the coaches. That was Morris Natale, Paul Pezos and Travis Dodd. Make sure you stick around for part two out tomorrow here on Kicking It Local. Make sure you subscribe to Kicking It Local wherever you get your podcasts so you can get a taste of the SA football community. Plus, follow at Kicking It Local SA on Instagram and Twitter so you don't miss any of the action. See you soon.